What's up, you guys? It's Adana. So um, I wanted to come and talk to you guys because I had a question posed from my video last week. And if you have not seen my video, I was talking about how PA school is not for everyone or being a PA is not for everyone. Uh, and I'm going to delve a little bit deeper into that in the weeks to come, specifically about rejection fatigue. And I, I mean, it's like this term that I've coined. Well, I mean, I don't know if I've coined it. Uh, maybe it's something that's been around. But it's just this idea of going after something or um, chasing after something, applying for something, and then consistently being rejected from that thing that you are seeking and the fatigue and the frustration that comes with that. So I'll definitely be touching on that either next week or the week after. But in this video, I wanted to talk about a question that was posed from that video, uh, just asking about basically what other routes are there that you can do as a PA apart from just being a provider. So let's get into the video right now. All right, what's up you guys? So like I said, did that video, had a question, the, vi the question came from World of Pressa Canario, uh, and it said some may have conflicts of not having the ability to change roles outside of being a PA um, or a provider in different specialties. Time and life circumstances may require or desire change in roles, positions, or type. Are PAs able to transition in other roles besides a change in specialty as a provider? First question. And second question is, are there a ton of opportunities in that area as well? Now, obviously, like for the second question, are there a ton of opportunities? That's relative. I mean, a ton of opportunities for who, right? You know, depending on your education, um, your experience, like maybe there might be a ton of opportunities for you in these roles outside of changing a specialty because you guys already know that as PAs, we can cross over specialty lines very easily, very seamlessly. So that's not the issue. So um, World of Pressa is asking specifically what else is there outside of just being a provider? And so uh, I know quite a few PAs, um, you know, some of them were my teachers who stepped away from being providers like in the clinic or like did it maybe once a week just to keep up their clinical skills and became professors and teachers. So obviously that's one thing that you can do. You can be a professor, you can be a teacher. Now you have a master's degree, so um, it opens it up a little bit more for you. But obviously if you have a doctorate's degree in like education or even a DN, uh, like a, a DMSC or uh, I think there's like another uh, kind of like healthcare doctorate degree that you can get as a PA. So depending on what you have, that will open up more doors for you in terms of the various different areas that you can actually um, teach in. But yes, there is other things that you can do outside of being a PA um, provider. And that one thing um, that most people go turn to is being a, a teacher um, and kind of bringing up the next group of PAs. Another thing that you can do is be a clinical researcher. And so depending on the area that you're in, obviously, like in the DMV area uh, where there's lots of research happening, um, or if you're working in an area where there are kind of research hospitals or teaching hospitals, there will be positions there for PAs to be kind of clinical researchers. Now, you're not providing care um, in the in the sense that you would in the hospital. You're doing lots of monitoring, um, taking uh, very different like labs and you know quantifying those and, and giving them to the researchers as well and and talking about like what this means for whatever it is that you're testing um, whatever variable you're going on so that is another thing that you can absolutely do is be a clinical researcher. Um, apart from that, you can be an administrator in a hospital or an administrator at a school or an administrator um, at uh, like a private practice. So I've seen PAs that are uh, the head of their particular PA department. Um, you know, it's kind of like maybe similar to uh, your 
nurse educator ish type role, but they kind of oversee all of either the APPs in that area. So including NPs or just the PAs. And so you would go to them for like various different things. Like we have our own like kind of PA administrative leads who we go to, uh, you know, to talk about salary, to talk about like issues that we may have on the job, to talk about, you know, other grievances, um, things that we like. Uh, they're the ones that we go to for our evaluations along with whatever attending it is, is over um, that particular team. But ultimately, uh, you can be an administrator uh, if that is so, you know, something that you want to do. So lots of kind of like more HR, human resources type of feels um, if you're into that and managing people. So there are there are areas i just listed three areas education um, research and then obviously administration and that is like across the board with healthcare right so those are kind of like the standards in terms of places where people go and then you can obviously you know like open up like these very like you know businesses various businesses that you're running you know you can do youtube <laughs> Follow me on YouTube, you guys, if you're just kind of watching this aimlessly and you haven't subscribed to me yet, go ahead and do that. Um, but you can do YouTube, you can do, um, you know, other kind of like fun educational things like TikTok and stuff, um, YouTube shorts. Um, or on Instagram, uh, but at the same time, like typically people run to education, they go to, again, doing research, and then obviously being an administrator. Um, if there are tons of jobs out there, uh, I don't know, you know, like there are lots of people looking for these jobs, and so, um, that's and even me saying lots is relative right because uh i could mean like oh you know what there's like a hundred people out there or over a hundred people out there looking for uh jobs as teachers um or professors and then you know maybe somebody else might be like that's not a lot at all i'm thinking like tens of thousands or thousands of people is a lot so again it's all relative like your skill set your education your experience will dictate like what opens up to you but um, if life circumstances or just life in general warrants a change or you would like a change, uh, there is a space for you, okay? Um, so apart from just being a provider, those are the three areas that I would su suggest people look into. Um, they're there for you after you've practiced for a little while, you've gotten your feet wet and you've gotten your fill of, um, you know, dealing with like bedside, I guess you could say, um, patient care. You can move into those areas and see how you, how you like it. All right, and then after that, lots of PAs open up their own like jobs, you know, their own careers, their own businesses outside of um, being PAs. They, lots of them have like various different side hustles uh, because the job and the career allows them and affords them the opportunity to do that. So that's always a, a fourth option if you have that entrepreneurial spirit. Okay, so thank you so much, World of Pressa, um, for asking that question. If you guys have any other questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. If you guys want to see any videos for me that I haven't done before, please leave that in the comment section below as well because I do read those comments um, and I look at like these other options uh, for more content. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, follow me on Instagram at on the PA and on Instagram at Get That C University. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.